Hi, Jonas and Cam. It's Auntie Sarah. You're going to read the next part of Mrs. Piggle Wiggle herself. So we have already met Mary Lou. And then um, we're just meeting her friend Kitty. So we're going to start here. The next day after school, Mary Lou went to see Mrs. Piggle Wiggle. She took her best friend, Kitty Wheeling, with her and Mrs. Pigglewiggle was glad to see them and showed them her upside-down house and served tea and cookies. Kitty said, her mouth full of cookie, my worst trouble is bed making. I cannot get them smooth. I much rather wash dishes like Mary Lou. But mother won't let me change with my sister Sally who washes dishes until I've learned to make beds properly. Oh, I just despise to make beds. Mrs. Piggle Wiggle poured herself another cup of tea, gave a saucer of cream to Lightfoot and four cookies to Wag, and then said, if you think you have a hard time making beds, Kitty, imagine how hard it is for me. You see, the cruel queen sleeps in my beds every night and inspects them every morning. And if she finds even a single wrinkle, even one as big as a pin, she'll have me thrown in the dungeon. Come upstairs and I'll show you how to make beds. They went upstairs and Mrs. Piggle Wiggle threw the covers clear off the foot of one of her beds. And then she had Kitty help her make it. When they finished, it was as smooth as flour. No, as the floor, no wrinkles. Mrs. Piggle Wiggle said, the secret is to throw the covers way back. You simply cannot smooth up a bed. <clears throat> if you do, there might be a wrinkle down in the foot. And of course, uh, let's see here. Of course, the cruel queen will find it down in the, and then you go down in the dungeon. Mrs. Piggle Wiggle took the bed apart again and said, Now, Kitty, you and Mary Lou make the bed while I tell the cruel king you are ready, the queen, you are ready for inspection. She went into the closet and shut the door. When she came out, just as, Mar as Kitty and Mary Lou finished the bed, she was no longer Mrs. Piggle Wiggle, but a wicked, haughty, cruel queen. On her head, she wore a glittery, jeweled crown. Her hair hung down her back in deep waves. Around her shoulder, she had a purple fur-trimmed robe, and on her face, she wore a smile so cruel it made Kitty's teeth chatter. She stalked over to the bed and lay down. With her gold slippers, she felt the bottom of the bed. With her ringed fingers, she felt the top and the sides. She stood up, and with her scepter, she pulled back the spread to see if the pillows were wrinkled. Everything was perfect. The cruel queen's face became convulsed in fury, and she yelled, Not a wrinkle! Not a single lump! I'm furious, but never fear, little slaves. My, the day, my day will come, and into the dungeon you will go. Come, my servants, we will go. And Mrs. Piggle Wiggle stalked into the closet. So here she is. There's a picture, actually. Mrs. Piggle Wiggle dressed as the cruel queen inspecting the bed. That was the beginning of Mrs. Piggle Wiggle's friendship with the children. The next day, Mary Lou and Kitty and Kitty's little brother Bobby and Bobby's friend Dickie went to Mrs. Piggle Wiggle's for tea. And the next day, they came and each brought someone else. Pretty soon, every child in town had been or was going to Mrs. Piggle Wiggle's house. She showed Bobby how to sneak out and get the fireplace logs without being caught by the Indians. She showed Dickie how to uh, lawn mow in a really, that a lawnmower is really a magical machine that mows down the enemies millions and billions at a time. She taught Max how to take out ashes without making a sound and without leaving a trace to show the train robbers who, who were on his trail that he and the sheriff had camped there that night. Mrs. Piggle Wiggle certainly knew how to make work fun, and she also knew that there are certain kinds of work that children love to do, even, they don't, even though they don't know how to do it very well, like painting and ironing and cooking and carpentry. One day, 
At Mrs. Piggle Wiggles, there were two little girls baking cookies, one little boy baking a pie and getting flour on the floor and eating most of the dough, a little girl ironing a very wrinkly f in a very wrinkly fashion, all of Mrs. Piggle Wiggles' clean clothes, four boys with paint on their faces and feathers in their hair, chopping kindling, and two boys painting the doghouse, and three little girls, and one boy darning socks for Mrs. Piggle Wiggle, and the pirates, and everywhere digging in the backyard, shooting and yelling and running through the house and grabbing hunks of raw cookie dough. Mrs. Piggle Wiggle was sitting over in the corner of the living room sewing on doll clothes. She was wearing the jeweled crown uh, and Kitty Wheeling was sitting beside her throne, which was a chair with a table draped over it. Dipping her hairbrush in a glass of water and making Mrs. Piggle Wiggle's hair into long, wet curls. Kitty said, Your Highness, shall I use the gold or silver hairpins? Mrs. Piggle Wiggle said, Oh, let's use the ones with the diamonds in them, hairdresser. They look better in this, with this crown. Just then the telephone rang, and it was some mother wanting to know what to do with her little girl who wouldn't take a bath. And that is how Mrs. Piggle Wiggle got started with her wonderful cures. She told Hubert's mother that uh, about the won't pick up toys cure, and Jonas's mother about the radish cure, and Cammie's mother about the slow eater tiny bite taker cure, and Max and Django's mother about the fighting quarrelers cure, and Charlie Brown's mother about selfish the selfish boy cure, and Sarah's mother about the answer back cure, and Elaine and Chad and Rachel's mother about never want to go to betters cure. And that is the end of chapter one. Until next time, bye-bye.